This video is brought to you by Hoodbeast.com. Design your own custom hoodies. Hoodbeast.com. We are beast. Yo, what's up guys? It's me, Zach Lee. Mark Stein and Zach Lowe report that the Celtics are in serious discussions with the Sixers to trade out of the overall number one spot. All right, we're here with Markel Fultz. Why did you decide to come to the Sixers game tonight? Uh, no, just show some support. I mean, uh, I might have a chance to go here, so I just want to come out and see how they play and stuff like that, the atmosphere. So. Oh, lordy, lordy, lordy. Basically, the video that I spent all day working on yesterday has just been deemed irrelevant see remember how i was talking about the draft and all the potential trades that could go down with all the rumors and stuff whether it be the lakers and the suns talking and then the sixers and the kings talking about trading picks all of that doesn't even matter anymore because according to a report that came out yesterday right after i uploaded the video it turns out that the boston celtics and the philadelphia 76ers are in serious trade talks about the number one pick in this year's draft. Yes, you did just hear that right. Philly might be getting the player it wanted all along after all. Markel Fultz. He had shown up at a few Sixers game over the season, and as a player, he is pretty much exactly what they need to finish their young, a uh, big three. A scoring guard who will blend in perfectly with Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid. And now they have a chance to get him, and no one's questioning their motives at all. Anytime you have a chance to land a talent like Markel Fultz, a type of player that can come in and help your organization immediately, you do whatever you can to make sure you get that player so like I said no one is questioning them but some people aren't quite sure what is in it for Boston on the surface with just a trade between these two teams I'm not sure why Boston would even be interested in doing something like this see Philly doesn't really have anything that Boston needs they could probably give them the third pick plus more future picks and I guess if Boston wasn't sold on folds for whatever reason and we're looking to take someone else anyways, it's like, okay. But once again, we're talking about Markel Fultz here. Let's not fool ourselves and act like he isn't the best player in this draft. And like I said, when you have a chance to take a guy like that, you take that guy, which is why I'm convinced that the trade is much bigger than it seems on the surface. Meaning that there is a third team that would have to be involved for a deal to be reached. And of course, there's already speculation on who that third team could be. The Chicago Bulls. And if the Bulls are involved, we all know who the Boston Celtics will be getting in that trade. Oh, let me step back and oh, kiss my. myself. Big time players make wow. big time plays. Jimmy Butler. Now I'm going to try and break this down for you guys, so try and like keep up because it could get a bit confusing. We all know the Boston Celtics are in a unique position. It's not every year where a team that finished with the top seed in their conference has the number one overall draft pick as well. And right now, they are at a huge crossroad where they can do either one of two things. Go all in for a ring or just start going young with Markel Fultz, uh, Jalen Brown, and whoever they get in next year's draft as well. And let's be honest here. No matter how good Markel might be, very few, very, very, very few rookies throughout the entire history of the NBA have been able to help carry their team to the promised land their first year in the league. So the Celtics plan is to build upon what they did last year, then trading the pick makes all the sense in the world. However, trading a pick for more picks, especially when the pick you're trading away could be the best player not just in this year's draft, but the best player in the next three drafts combined doesn't make much sense. Which is why I believe that they're trading the picks for more picks so they can trade all the picks for a player to help them win like they want to. And this is the overall beauty of the situation the Celtics are in right now. In order for the Boston Celtics to sign a big free agent to give a max player, they don't have to lose anyone of value at all. If free agency started right now, they could offer a max contract to a player without facing any real financial problems. So that's one more piece added to a potential championship team, I guess you could say for free. And then with the picks they were given Philly, which already include the third pick in this year's draft, plus they still have the Nets pick in 2018, plus some nice players that the Celtics could also move like Jay Crowder, Avery Bradley, Terry Rozier. If any team out there is looking to get rid of their star player for assets, there would be absolutely no better package that you could ask for. On the Celtics side, of course this is a huge risk. The safer move is to keep your picks in this year's draft. Keep your picks in next year's draft and just see what they can become. And you could win a championship down the line because of it. As a fan, when you see how dominant the Golden State Warriors are right now, it only makes it much more risky to try and trade future assets to try and challenge them for the crown. But come on, I mean, this won't be the first time in Celtics team history that they had bet it all on a chance to win now. Back in 08, 
when they brought in Garnett and Allen, yeah, that was a crazy offseason for them when they brought in two premier players. I mean, they had to trade the number five pick in 2007, Jeff, who's wound up becoming Jeff Green, Wally Zerbiak, and LeBron's dad and Delonte West for Ray Allen. And then for KG, they had to give up a host of players, including Al Jefferson, back when he was a good player in the league, and two first round picks in the 09 draft for Kevin Garnett. And at the time, that was considered to be a huge risk taken in a move to win now. And we all know how that turned out. Turned out fantastic for Boston. It's everybody in Chicago. VV. It's everybody. South Cat. Basswood. My mama be there. See everybody while I love. Oh, my mama. Oh, my mama made it, ma. Top of the world. Actually, that trade put them in the position where they are now, if you think about it. But not so great for Minnesota, though, as they kind of whiffed on um, both the picks they got from Boston in the 09 draft. I mean, they could have had DeRozan and Curry, but picked Rubio and Flint. And now for Chicago, you know, it's kind of clear that no matter how good Jimmy Butler is, and he is really freaking good, there comes a time when you have to stop lying to yourselves and telling yourself that you can win with this player. The window you guys have to win with him is getting smaller and smaller. And with the situation that you're currently in, it's not looking like you're gonna be able to build a team around him fast enough to do so. So if you can get a ton of assets for him, then why not? This will probably be the best deal you could hope to get for him or any star player of his caliber. If you don't trade him this summer, don't expect full value for him if you try and trade him midway through the season, since by then, I mean, his free agency won't be too far off. He will be a free agent not after that year, but after the year after that. And teams won't be willing to give up nearly as much as they would for him right now. Anyways, though, to recap the whole trade after everything went down, after all the pieces were moved, Boston would get Jimmy Butler. Philly would get the number one overall pick, plus they'd have to take on any contracts they need to in order to make the trade work. Chicago would get the number three pick in the draft, future first rounders from Boston and Philly, plus some assortment of players from Philly and Boston. And then of course, we know Boston goes into free agency and gets someone like Gordon Hayward and Blake Griffin and tries to compete now. So that being said, if there is a trade and according to a source that is close to the situation, there will be, I fully expect a third team like the Bulls to emerge in the deal because I don't think the Celtics just trade the pick for more picks. If they trade the pick, it'll be to try and win now. But uh, Philly though, let's talk about Philly. I I don't even have much to say. I can't imagine how fun it would be to watch Markel Fultz, Ben Simmons, and Joel Embiid on the same team. That will be crazy, and I hope the trade goes down. It is also worth noting, though, that the Los Angeles Lakers also just helped their workout with Markel Fultz, and according to reports, they absolutely love him, so much so that they are willing to also trade up in the draft to get him. And that's just very telling of Markel Fultz. And you have two teams that have the second and the third pick that are willing to give up so much just to move up one or two picks in this year's draft, which is supposed to be one of the deepest drafts that we have seen in a long time. Markel Fultz must be really freaking good. And that's going to lead us to the question of the day. What do you guys think about this? Do you think that the Celtics will trade the pick? If so, do you think that there is a third team involved in it? Let me know down in the comment section below, but now let's take a look at what you guys said in yesterday's video. In yesterday, after it came out that Chris Paul will also meet with the Nuggets and the Rockets in free agency, I asked you guys what the best situation for him would be and here is what you said. The best team for Chris Paul is the Rockets. Harden and Paul is the best choice. Rockets would have the best backcourt in the league. I personally think that he should go to the Spurs. They already have Leonard and adding Paul to the squad will greatly help since Tony Parker is already old. The Clippers are just cursed and he won't ever contend on that team. As for the Rockets, they already have Harden playing at the point guard position. Yeah, so Spurs. Chris Paul should stay. If the Clippers can somehow get a better small four, maybe Melo, and with four stars on the team, you can't believe they don't have a chance to beat the Warriors. They already have a 50 plus win team, but only need to step it up in the playoffs. I could realistically see Chris Paul on all of those teams. And also people are saying that not the Rockets because they already have a playmaker in James Harden. But there's nothing wrong with having multiple guys on the team that are elite playmakers, as long as they can score too. It's only a problem if you have like Ricky Rubio and Rajon Rondo, both guys who can set players up to score, but can't really score themselves. Harden and Paul, on the other hand, I think they will learn to play with each other just fine. If anything, it will be a nice break for both guys since they wouldn't have to carry their teams offensively like they do now all of the time. Like I said though, don't forget to leave your answer for today's question of the day down in the comment section below, but other than that, Thank you guys once again for watching the video. Hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more daily NBA videos. And until tomorrow, 
keep getting the bucks, Team SDC, and I'm out of here. Peace!